Hello and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Rev. Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who is helping to lead worship today, we welcome you. We are so excited that you have chosen to worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church on this special day of celebration where we're celebrating Epiphany. More about that soon. But I want to extend a special welcome to whoever may be joining with us for the first time for online worship. We're particularly uh, pleased that you have chosen to worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church and want to encourage you to use our contact form. The link to that is in the comment section and there's a QR code for you as well. Please use that contact form today so that we can get to know you a little bit better. We can connect with you and be able to come up alongside you in your life of faith and connect you with all the ministry opportunities that are going on with Douglas Avenue. I also want to remind you that on that contact form, there is a place for prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and prayer team. So we hope that everyone who's joining in online worship will use that contact form today. Now, when we join together in online worship, we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. When we covenant to participate, that means that we're going to participate in what it is that we're doing today. We encourage you to turn off other devices and distractions. You know, this isn't just a random video that you're watching. This is worship together in worship of God. So really focus in. Go ahead and do the things we're doing. Pray when we're praying. Sing when it's time to sing. Focus in when it's time to focus focus in. That's our covenant to participate. And then we covenant to be a blessing. And that means that the way that we're in the comment section together, the way we are having conversation together, the way that we're gathered with other people while we're worshiping, the way we're sending this out into the world, that all of it, we want to be a blessing to everyone uh, who participates and comes in contact with this worship experience today. Now today is our celebration of Epiphany, when we remember the visiting of the wise men, the Magi, uh, to the young Jesus. And as a part of that, we are going to all light together a candle for Epiphany. So I encourage you, if you have not already done so, to get a candle. I have mine here and a lighter of some kind. I have mine right here. Or maybe um, a flashlight or your camera phone or, or whatever it is that you have so that you can join with us in lighting our candles for Epiphany. Again, welcome to worship. We're so glad you're here. Please join us in singing, Here I Am to Worship.
Good morning, I'm Marcia Stout. I'm the keyboard player for the DAUMC Praise Band. I invite you to have your lighter and candle or whatever light you have with you and join me in lighting our Christ candles for Epiphany. Today we mark the beginning of the season of Epiphany, a season of light, learning, and reorientation. We join with Christians all over the world at Epiphany as we remember the Magi, or wise men, and their journey to visit the young child, Jesus. In the darkness of the night, the Magi were directed by a bright light to Bethlehem. Coming from the heavens, the light led them to Jesus, the Messiah, God's light. We light our Christ candle in all of the places that we are to remember and celebrate the light. Please light your candle or other light with me now. Please join me in a spirit of prayer. God of starlight, disperse the darkness of our lives that we may behold the light of your love shining in every corner of our world. When we would rather not make spiritual journeys of our own, help us put on our metaphorical walking shoes and get going on the way. Guide our footsteps in your ways that justice may flourish and peace may abound, that we may be light and help to all in need. Help us follow along with the Magi of old, that through our journeys of faith, we may also see and act through your love made real in Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, let's share the peace of Christ. You can say, peace be with you, and respond, and also with you. Share that in the comments with one another, with me, and with those folks in our church community. Peace be with you. Good morning. This is the Young Adult Sunday School class. My name is Gay Seibert. This is my husband, Rich. Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. And also with you. I'm Molly Barron. And I'm Rex. Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. And also with you. I'm Allie. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Trisha Kumach. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Erin Emery. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Justine Dione. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Rita Brinkley. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Michelle Ingle. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Joe Johnson. And this is my wife, Rebecca. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Cindy Hammer. And peace be with all of you. Get ready, it is time for small talk. I encourage all of the children who are joining with us to get in really close to your devices and your screens so that you can see and hear absolutely everything that goes on with small talk. Small talk is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and she of course will be joined by her wonderful assistant, Laud the Lamb. So come in close right now for small talk. Good morning, everybody. It is Miss Lori and Laud the Lamb and his assistant, Cohen. Laud, what are you doing? Oh. oh, oh, that's why you have your friends here. We have our, we have our three wise men. Yes, we have our three wise men because it's Epiphany Sunday. And Epiphany Sunday is kind of about the wise men and their journey. So you're, you're going to try to do what they're doing and follow the star? Well, buddy, um, I get it, but it's, it's kind of light outside right now. So that's going to be kind of hard. You're going to have to do this journey in the, in the dark. I know you're kind of afraid of the dark, so I'm not sure. And and the telescope is great because they follow the star, but today we do have, you know, we have GPS. You could just like plug it in and see if you could find Jesus, right? No. Hmm. Fortunately today, we don't actually have to follow a star in the sky to find Jesus. That's what Luna, the boxer, is trying to tell us right now by ringing those bells. Jesus is everywhere and he's in our heart. 
So we're going to try to find Jesus without a telescope, without the star in the sky. We can find him even in the bells that Luna is ringing right now. So remember to look around you, see Jesus in everything that we do. Have a great Sunday, Epiphany Sunday, guys. Bye. Good morning. My name is Alan Griffey. I sing in the praise band. Our reading from the Bible is Matthew chapter 2, verses 2 through 12. We will hear the story of the Magi coming to see the infant Jesus, and we will sing the verses of the first Noel along with it. Let us open our hearts to hear what God is saying to us through our Bible reading and song. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the territory of Judea during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We've seen a star in the east and we've come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled, and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and the legal experts and asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said, in Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote, you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means are you the least among the rulers of Judah, because from you will come one who governs, who will shepherd my people Israel.
Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them the time when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search carefully for the child. When you found him, report to me so that I too may go and honor him. When they heard the king, they went and look, the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. Then they opened their treasure chest and presented him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. Today in worship, we are celebrating one of my favorite Christian holidays, Epiphany. I love the images of stars and light, of journey and learning, and of course the story of the Magi from far away who visit the young Jesus. The Feast of Epiphany proper is January 6th, and it marks the beginning of a new season, which extends to the beginning of Lent, which starts with Ash Wednesday. This year, the season of Epiphany goes for seven weeks until the first week of March. The word itself, Epiphany, means manifestation or reveal. And for the Christian church, this is a season to focus on the revelation of God, the revealing of God in the person of Jesus. So today we celebrate a very powerful experience of the revealing of God, experienced through the visitation of the three kings, or the Magi. Now the first thing to pop up in your mind may be the cultural image that is loosely based on the Bible story from Matthew, that of three robed men on camel following a star which is right above the manger where Jesus was born. You know, the th we three kings of Orient our bearing gifts, we traverse afar. But the actual text from the Bible tells a very different kind of story, which has a unique strength and a power on its own. It's why we take time to explore this story about Jesus and his family and these visitors from the East that we find in Matthew. It is distinctive and different from the one that we hear in Luke with its manger birth and angels and songs and shepherds. In Matthew, our story is full of stars and dreams, political intrigue and danger, darkness, light, and following God's direction in a new way. There's all kinds of things that we don't know about these folks who showed up from far away in our story. We don't really know how many of them there actually were. We just know that they offered three gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We don't know what else they may have brought with them or who else might have been traveling along with them. We don't know precisely where they came from, but that they came from the East. Our Bible doesn't actually call them kings or wise men either. Rather, the Greek in the biblical text is magi, M-A-G-I, like the root word for magic. This has been translated in English texts in different ways, wise men, kings, and band of scholars, to name a few. We've mostly shied away from calling them astrologers, which might very well be the most accurate translation from the Greek of the word magi. In Persia, where these visitors likely came from, magi were dream interpreters. By Jesus' time, the term magi referred to fortune tellers or stargazers, really more like astrologers or even what we might call horoscope fanatics, 
looking at the stars for signs about life, the world, and directions for how to behave and what to do. Magi in Jesus' day weren't wise men or kings or models of religious piety. They were magicians, astrologers, pseudoscientists whose practice was actually condemned by Jewish law. They're heretics. They don't worship the right God. They bring gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, which are elements used in their magical practice. Really, these magi are the wrong religion and the wrong ethnicity and the wrong understanding, wrong everything. But they are the heroes in this story that the Gospel of Matthew tells us about Jesus' early life. So why are these star followers here? Why are they so important? One big reason is that the Magi represent the coming of all tribes and all nations and all peoples to worship God through Jesus Christ. As the prophet Isaiah says in chapter 60, verses 1 through 3, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. At Epiphany, the Magi show us the dissolution of all walls between peoples, all walls between people and God. And they anticipate Jesus' commission to his disciples, found at the end of the Gospel of Matthew, to go to all nations. I also believe that the story of the Magi helps us understand a lot about how people come to have faith and grow in faith. Let's think about this for a moment. First of all, the Magi are able to come find Jesus because they saw a star, a big star, a bright star. The Magi were looking for stars and signs in the sky because they were Magi. A big special star in the sky meant that an important king was ascending and they should go see about this new king. Seeing a special star was something in the Magi's own language. God got the Magi's attention in their own language, where they were, in a way that they understood. In this case, a star. Now, while the big special star got the Magi's attention and got them started on their journey, they still didn't yet understand who Jesus was or that it was God working in them. So they made some false assumptions. We hear from the Bible that they first went to Jerusalem, which was in the general vicinity of where the star was, and they made their way to the king's palace. And this makes all the sense, right? The big ascending star means a new king is arriving, and of course, a new king must be from the royal line. So, to the palace, the Magi went. And this terrified King Herod, and all of Jerusalem too, and that would be the religious establishment that we hear about in our story. The Magi arrive, and they tell Herod why they are there to worship the new king, and he's like, what do you mean a new star has arisen and a new king has been born? I'm the king in these parts. Even so, the Magi received helpful information from the trained theologians they found in Jerusalem and from Scripture. In the Hebrew Scriptures, our Old Testament, the prophets wrote that Bethlehem is the place for the king's birth. And this information that they received there in Jerusalem gave them some course correction, helped those magi out. So off they went to Bethlehem. So we have God getting the magi's attention in a way that they will understand a star, and then guidance, correction, and help through the study of scripture and teachers. Finally, when the magi reach Jesus, they are changed by that encounter. They were overwhelmed with joy. They knelt down and worshiped this child born the new king of the Jews, not in the palace or in the temple court, but to two God-loving, obedient Jews who were following God's direction for their lives. The Magi worshiped and they responded by giving the gifts they had brought with them, things that were of their life and work and were valuable to them. And we also learn that their lives are changed. The Magi are warned by God to not return to King Herod, and they don't. 
They make the choice to listen to God, to change their course and go home by another way, having encountered for themselves the love of God made flesh in Jesus. I think the story of the Magi's journey is so helpful for us as we enter this new year and into this season of Epiphany. For one thing, the journey of the Magi tells us a whole lot about how people who don't have a faith community or haven't begun their journey of faith or are stalled out on their journey of faith, how it is that they are going to get going. If God is to reach them, God has to go where they are. And thank God, God already is where they are. Our amazing, grace-filled, loving God is already with people out there in the world, so to speak, outside of the community of faith. God is already working and speaking in countless ways, small and large, in people's lives because this is who God is. People choose to listen or to not listen, to respond or not to respond, but God is still there showing up over and over. God also calls us, those who love and follow Jesus, to be stars. God calls us to help, to invite, to bring, to guide, to be a friend to those without friends, to walk beside others in life and circumstances, to be a community of faith that helps illuminate what God is doing and where God is calling us to go next. Our community here in Springfield and beyond needs us to shine with God's love, to show in real and tangible ways what it looks like, sounds like, and feels like to love and follow Jesus. I think another gift of the story of the Magi is the invitation to reflect and give thanks for the star or stars we followed or are following right now to come into a life of faith or grow in our faith or even to be a part of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Was it or is it family or friends who help us? A simple invitation to be a part of a service project or to give or to participate in a small group or join in a worship service online? Who are the stars that have led us? Who are the stars that have led you. I invite you to give thanks to God for those. And if you want to share a little bit in the comments, do that now or, or a little bit later. Finally, I believe the story of the Magi offers a hopeful and helpful example for our next year together as we seek where and how God is calling Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church into the future. What kind of stars is God setting in the sky for this church to see? What are the yearnings, dreams, visions, and passions that God is setting on our collective hearts? What are the hurts, the brokenness, the needs of Springfield and beyond that God is calling us to partner with God and to be a part of God's healing work of love, hope, justice, and healing? I believe we can ask these questions and look for these stars in full confidence, knowing that as we seek God's direction and purpose, God not only guides and assists, but brings alongside help, calls forth the resources we have and those that we are growing into, and multiplies it all for fruitful, life-changing ministry in this community, whatever and however that looks for us in 2022. And like the Magi, our lives will change. We will go down new roads. We will try new things. We will be brave and answer God's call. We will make mistakes and try again. And like the Magi, I believe we will find it to be an awesome journey, a life-changing journey for ourselves and for others in our community all led by God and infused with the grace and love and healing of Jesus all along the way. So a happy, blessed, and star-filled epiphany journey to you. Amen. Hey, hey moon, it's funny how time Lies. Yesterday we were just kids 
hanging in the sky, staying up all night. Hey, hey moon, do you ever get a tear in your eye? When you think about the time that God came down, I couldn't help myself. I had to shine so bright. And I remember that newborn baby And the wise men that traveled so far That's when I knew I was made for a reason I feel like the luckiest star Hey Moon Funny how things have changed I wish that they could see the things we've seen Before the colored lights and the Christmas trees Hey, hey moon So many are still searching for signs God is stirring in their hearts They will lift their wandering eyes and see a shine then they'll remember that newborn baby and the wise men that traveled so far they'll know they were made for a reason I feel like the luckiest star hey moon And the wise men that traveled so far I know I was made for a reason I feel like the luckiest star Hey Moon Hey Moon Hey Moon Hey Moon hey, Good morning, Douglas Avenue. My name is Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, and I am the executive director and pastor of Wouldn't It Be Lovely, which is hosted and founded in this building. And Douglas Avenue is my home church, and it is an honor to pray with you this morning. So I invite you to take a deep breath and clear your mind as we go to God in prayer. Oh God, as we reach for the star, this year, like the wise men so long ago. May it always lead us to you, our Christ. Thank you for the light of epiphany as we begin this new year, 2022. Thank you for our blessings, even at times that we forget or we have trouble naming them. We know that as we look back on this past year, we can see how your light shined and guided us through some difficult times and some wonderful times and how your love kept us seeking and keeping us moving forward. We know, oh God, that you are with us on our journeys. Some of our paths are straight and easy. Others are full of stops and turns, but no matter our journey, oh God, you are with us and that you keep us going. And we are so grateful for that, oh God. Your light enables us to continue to do ministry in this community and our neighborhood, even those times that it has been difficult. Your light led our church to continue to care for the unemployed, the addicted, the hungry, the at-risk children, the grieved, and the lonely. It, became, it is because of your light 
that we supported healthcare workers, vaccinated our neighbors, and became a beam of hope in this neighborhood. Your light led our church to do so many wonderful things this past year, and we give you thanks for that, oh God, and for all the people in this congregation and community that made it possible. And we know that your light will continue to shine into this year. Thank you, oh God, that your light will continue to lead us into new and exciting ministries, that you help us stay safe and you're with those that need you. We give you thanks, oh God. We pray that your light would especially be with those who are in need of your guidance and direction. For those who have been affected by COVID in whatever way, especially, oh God, we pray for the healthcare workers and those in hospitals and institutions that are doing so much to help us through this pandemic. God, we ask that you shine your light on those that have been displaced by weather emergencies throughout our country. For those that are calling your name and need you at borders or wherever, oh God, we just ask you to be present in those darker places and shine your light, oh God, and lead the way. We lift, O oh God, all of these prayers to you because you are the light of the world. We ask, O oh God, that those listening and praying with us will join together as we pray that prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to thank you and encourage you in your journey of generosity for 2022. We are so grateful for all of the ways that you support the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church and your financial gifts that make all of our ministries possible. I want to encourage you to continue in that giving. It's easy to give using our online giving portal. You can access that through the QR code or the link that's in the comment section. You could also set up automatic giving with your financial institution or with ours. If you need help with that, just let us know in the church office. Office. And of course, you can send in church, uh, you can send in checks right to the church office at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Thank you for all of these ways that you give and that you connect uh, so that we can be in powerful ministry in our community. For the month of January, our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church is taking a pause from most of our in-person gatherings, groups, and meetings for the health and safety of the community in light of the sharp increase in COVID-19 infections and hospitalizations in our regions. We are having a very brief in-person worship on Sunday mornings at 1030 from about 1030 to 11. That is very simple. Um, we hope, though, that you will continue to connect online for worship with any number of small groups that are meeting online, and even some safe opportunities to serve the community. The e-newsletter is the best way to learn about and connect in all of these ways. So please use that contact form today. Make sure to put your email address there so that we can be sure to get that e-newsletter e to you and all of that information. I also want to let you know that it is time for Star Words. This is a beloved tradition for many in our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. A star word is a single word that is printed out on a beautiful paper star that is picked out from random from our collection. Here's one right here. Uh, and the idea is to contemplate what the star word might mean for you in this new year. How might God be speaking to you through this simple message? You're encouraged to have that star word and hang it up somewhere where you can see it each day and use it as a point of reflection. You can pick up your very own star word at a special drive through event in the back parking lot of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church on Saturday, January 15th from 10 a.m. until noon. If you'd rather receive a star word through the mail, uh, we will randomly pick one out of the basket for you and uh, let us know in the church office. We will mail that to you. Again, thank you for your journey of generosity and all the ways you give and support to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Please join us in singing Star Child.
Thank you so much for joining in this time of online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We just pray that this whole experience has been powerful and uplifting and meaningful for you, that you will continue to join with us for online worship, particularly during this season, that you will let us uh, walk with you and journey with you in your life of faith. Remember to use that contact form so that we can connect with you and be a part of that life. We love to pray with you. Remember, there's a place there for prayer concerns that go to our pastors and prayer team. And remember that we are here during this time. Uh, we, as I said, we love you and um, being a part of your life is so important to us and to our community of faith. Our benediction today is given by the Women of Power Coffee Hour group and it is based on Howard Thurman's poem, The Work of Christmas. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone. When the kings and princes are home. When the shepherds are back with their flock. The work of Christmas begins. To find the lost. To heal the broken. To feed the hungry. To release the prisoner. To rebuild the nations. To bring peace among brothers and sisters. To make music in the heart. Go now to find, heal, feed, release, rebuild, bring peace, and create in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.